Not too long ago, we actually did the Alienware Aurora R7 unboxing, but we haven't given you the complete rig rundown and a look inside. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, so stay tuned. Welcome to live streaming tech, where you'll learn to stream like a pro with technology you should know. Today, we are going to take a deeper look at the Alienware Aurora R7. It's been nearly a year since I first got this, and I think it was kind of cool that I would show you some of the things that I'm using in coordination with the Alienware R7 and uh, what it looks like on the inside, because I gotta be straight up with you. This is where my brother's the real pro at this, so he's gonna take you inside and tell you what some of those components are, how they function, and of course, how we can upgrade it. Because to me, it's really cool as it is, but it's even needed that we can build onto it. So let's go. So for the better part of the past year, I've been using quite a few elements here that help for live streaming very simply. So let's take a look at it over here. I've got two AOC monitors. One of them is a 27 inch and this one's a 23 inch. Uh, that ran about a couple hundred right here, whereas I got this one on sale for about a hundred. Love this one, but not as much as the larger one because it's fully adjustable. It'll raise and it'll lower and it actually tilts. This one is just static. It'll tilt and that's just about it. For $97 though, you can't beat that with the stick. The very next thing is I actually have two cameras. I rarely ever use anything beyond the Logitech C920. This has been really nice. If you find your strap for cash, this one's about $50 or less. Definitely worth the money. This is the Logitech Brio. It's a 4K camera. I rarely ever use it at 4K. I use it at 1080 more than anything. I like the fact that we can actually capture 60 frames per second on this one. So this is by far my most utilized camera. Every now and then I'll use the C920 only because it's just there. The next thing is, and actually if we just bring it right on over here, I have actually two different microphones because I actually stream with my wife over on the Self Publishing with Dale channel. We have two Movo lavaliers. These microphones need phantom power. You can't just plug them into your computer and expect them to work. So that's where the Tascam US322 uh, audio interface works really well. It actually does up to 48 volts of phantom power. And the beauty of it is too, if you're a musician, you can actually even plug in your guitar or you can do vocals. It has awesome software that comes with it. I rarely ever use any of the software for the US322, but uh, I typically have both of these plugged in. Love this one. Uh, and if you ever find that you wanna mess around with this, you literally can put your headphones in there, uh, play around with compression. You can put in effects, things like that. For me, I just use it mainly for the phantom power and adjusting mic level. I'm a loud person by nature. My wife is very quiet, so I'm able to boost her signal and then bring mine back. All right, the very next thing is since you're running two different monitors, and for me, I use my MacBook Pro and I wanna jump between the two of them, I actually have a switch. This is the HDMI switch. So in one of them, I actually have the Mac where it'll go into one signal, and then I have the other one for PC. So then I can just switch between the two of them without much issues. That ran me about $15, and with each one of the cords, probably an additional $20 altogether. Well worth it because I'm able to optimize my whole workflow and get through everything much, much, much faster. But in this instance, we don't have the MacBook Pro set up. Alienware, they, they nailed it as far as it goes with you know being efficient, being able to work really fast. My biggest complaint was some of their accessories were just really, really loud. I actually pulled them out of the box. They have, first of all, they have a cord on them, both on the mouse and on the keyboard. And that's just a no-go for me because I already have tons of cords up here anyways. So I Frankensteined everything. Based on my brother's recommendations, this was a very cheap wireless uh, mouse that actually came with a wireless keyboard. The keyboard was super loud. This is really, really, I mean, you can even, let me just put it close enough. You can't really even hear this thing. It's very, very, very quiet. Uh, but I love this one and I've never, and this is news to my brother as he's taping this, I've never had to replace the battery ever. And I use this a lot and it goes on standby, but it's a, it's a generic brand name called Uru, like U-H-R-U. I have no idea. It was super cheap on Amazon. 
Now, this one right here though, the keyboard was a bit more pricey and a good friend of mine, big shout out to Kenny, he actually hooked me up with this on his birthday and it's actually by Microsoft. I can't think of the actual you know, model or anything else like that. It had a mouse that came with it. Once again, big, loud, clunky, didn't want it. This has a softer touch to it, so I'm not hearing click, 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 clack, clack. It just, it's so annoying to me. I'm not a gamer, so I don't want to hear a bunch of pounding when I'm working on my stuff. My prized possession and all of this stuff, this is one of my favorite, this, seriously, if you're going to stream, and we did a video on this already, the Elgato Stream Deck, this right here is fun. It, is, it makes streaming so much easier, but it also makes it fun where you can actually set up you know, gifts that will fire off, any kind of memes you want to. If you want to kill your mic, you want to turn it on, you want to run a video, you want to do a bumper, the Elgato Stream Deck is so worth it. If you find your strap for cash, I would highly, highly, highly recommend at least getting the Elgato Mini Stream Deck. And it's about for nearly two thirds the price of this one. It'll make life easy. Now, if you're super strapped for cash, you can always just get the Streamlabs app and put it on your phone and do it that way. But I'm gonna tell you, it's not near as nice as this is. Well worth the investment. I'm telling you, this is my favorite thing. I would not go without a live stream without it. I literally weep when I don't have it. That's everything that's pretty much plugged into here. Something that you don't see is an additional HDMI cord that comes out and it feeds over into my living room television. And that's because then I can sit and I can watch live streams on YouTube or on Twitch and I can still interact with them. And that's just one of those nice little things about having the Alienware. Outside of that though, um, I think that we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the inside of this and hopefully get some of the stuff to where you guys understand it as well as I do. Because I don't really understand a lot of this, so I have to get my brother to kind of tell me, what is this, what's that, how does it function? So let's go ahead and take a look on over there. Okay, let's crack this case open. This is the Roar R7. So you're just gonna take this screw out in the back here. This kind of keeps it from where you're locking it and unlocking it. So got that screw out, set it aside. It comes out, I'm sorry. Let's unlock those. And it goes up, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So as you see, this is kind of what I would call a typical Dell build. Dell likes to take their mid tower. This is considered a mid tower. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people look at it and they go, holy crap, that's a big tower. This is mid. If you see my streaming rig, this is like twice the size of this. Uh, but then again, there's still room to grow in here. There's plenty of space. Notice here, you have space for some more hard drives. You can put some more solid state, two more solid state hard drives in there. And matter of fact, you can even buy more brackets, uh, third party brackets and uh, mount it to where you can add even more to it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and I do believe we're unlocked. Yep. So it pulls out this way, it's kind of weird. But like I said, this is how they save space. So power supply, typical run in the mill. This is what you would find, um, you know, OEM, uh, nothing fancy. Is it bad? No. Is it great? No. Uh, would I recommend Dale upgrade it? No. He's, he's not into gaming or anything like that. He's just streaming and doing a lot of video editing, that kind of thing. Now, however, if this were to die or he was starting to have some funky things in here, that is the only problem I see that this is going to be a pain in the ass to kind of swap out with other power supplies. So we're going to have to definitely make sure we check the sizes and whatnot. All right. So let's go ahead and take a closer look on the inside. If you were to get the Aurora R7 in, you want to keep this in here. This looks like something that they would put in to ship it to keep the uh, graphics card from flopping around. No, believe it or not, this actually gives the graphics card support because as you see, this is a uh, NVIDIA 1070 graphics card and it is huge. It is way bigger. Now true, this is, uh, I do believe it's a uh, micro motherboard. Yeah, yeah, it looks like micro. This is a monster, and you can imagine the weight that it's gonna put on that uh, PCI. So keep that plastic thing in when you can, unless you're removing or swapping pieces out. Okay, so as you see, here's Alienware's own little personal liquid cooled. Nothing super fancy to look at, like for instance, my streaming rig is colors going through it and whatnot, but once again, it's water cooled. Uh, they do have the uh, fan cooled versions. Am I correct, uh, Dale, on this? And you paid a little bit extra to have the water cooled? Yeah. Okay. So you can do fan, but uh, for instance, if you're going to be using this for gaming or streaming, 
that kind of stuff, you're gonna definitely wanna uh, stick with the water cooled and I think it was like maybe $60 more for it. And once again too, if you really wanted to, you could probably mod that out. Uh, but then again, as you've seen with the case cover, that's what you're looking at. So unless you were to pull out the whole thing, which I think the Alienware has a pretty cool looking case, even though you can't see inside of it. So if you were to uh, mod the uh, liquid cooled, it's really kind of pointless because it's gonna do the same work and it's gonna look fancier that no one's gonna see. And you know, unless you open up your case every time you play it, which good luck with that, with the uh, power supply being there. Down here, in the next PCI slot, uh, you're gonna see that uh, Dale's already installed an Elgato capture card. Now, um, a lot of people will debate, and it's, it's still a running debate on whether internal or external. So the thing you have to ask yourself when you're doing any kind of capture card, how much plugging and unplugging are you doing in it? How much do you need to move it around? So say for instance, uh, you're gonna be hooking up to um, multiple different consoles to say, uh, do live streaming with then um, I possibly would recommend an external one because it can be moved around. However, if say Dale decided to do that and he said, okay, I'm just using this to plug in my Mac, but I wanna plug in my old GameCube or my old Nintendo 64 and this and that, I would recommend getting a, uh, a port extension to where he can plug all his different consoles and then have an HDMI out. So basically an HDMI switch to where he can hit a button and it would switch between any of the consoles. So that way he could still run with the external or internal and have that external feel to it to where you know he doesn't have to keep unplugging and plugging in cords he would have the hdmi in coming from that port where all the different consoles are hooked up to we kind of talked a little bit of trash about the power supply once again it's not trash talk it's it's not a it's not a fancy power supply it's not a total ball pants uh it, it's kind of the run in the mill um is it something that i would build with no I would definitely spend a lot more money on my power supplies. That's the one mistake a lot of people make when uh, building PCs is they will go cheap on power supplies and they will put a ton of money in their graphics card, CPU, and um, their RAM and totally go cheap on this. Well, here's the problem. You go cheap on this, uh, you're gonna start running into problems uh, with powering everything in your PC and you're most likely to have something short out or whatever. So definitely, if you're gonna do your own build or any kind of mods or whatever, say you're gonna upgrade this, I would upgrade it to uh, something a lot better on this one. So underneath that water cooler there, we have the 8th gen uh, i7, and it's the 8700, I do believe. Uh, it has six cores, definitely enough uh, power for him to stream. Once again, Dale is not a uh, game streamer, but he's more of a uh, uh, produce your content, live stream, IRL, video editing. For the majority, I would say probably 75% of your stuff's IRL, right? Right. Okay, so obviously, it's probably overkill for <laughs> for him to do that. But once again, too, he also does a lot of uh, video editing as well on this when he's not live and he wanted stuff that was gonna be able to render uh, fast or properly. If you look further in here, see if you can get a better angle. That is his memory, that's his RAM there. And those are definitely run in the mill, generic ones. Uh, I would say they're probably like Kingsgate. They're definitely uh, Chinese RAM. There are uh, two sticks of eight gig. They're DDR4. He has the uh, eight gigs of DDR5 running through the card. So where your bottleneck's gonna most likely be is definitely up there at that RAM. Now, once again though, it is ample for what he wants to do. It's the uh, 16 gigs, so it's two eights, 16 gigs total, DDR4. And uh, he definitely has uh, room to slap in two more sticks so he can slap in two more eights. The thing is, is what I'd recommend when he does go to upgrade RAM, that we pull those bad boys out, set them to the side as for backups or whatever and uh, he go ahead and uh, upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs and we just use four separate uh, memory cards or yeah, sticks of memory for that. Point out here, let's see if we has the M.2. Oh, I can't remember if the other M.2 on this one. Actually you do. So that is your solid state. So they did give you an M.2. See, come here, come here, come here, come here. Look, I don't know if you can zoom in on it, but you see that at the very bottom, I'm gonna try not to touch it here. Right down there, you see that M.2? That's your M.2 port. Pull from the top and pull out. Come down here, and here's his M.2. Um, that's his solid state. 
Yeah, the, that, that's what I actually want to uh, install in my rig is because uh, I am dot two uh, capable on my motherboard as well. But I was kind of figuring why waste the money on it if I'm going to upgrade to a thread ripper anyways. Um, so, uh, yeah, by the way, I am uh, I am a AMD fan. Um, not that Intel does a bad job. I, I just prefer AMD, which is funny because I prefer NVIDIA cards over the AMD cards. I think AMD cards are trash in my opinion. But as far as uh, motherboards and CPU, I love AMD. Um, so at any rate, there's his M.2. Now I'm assuming his, uh, his regular hard drive, which is a two terabyte hard drive, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, two terabyte. Yeah, two terabyte is gonna be stored up there. You got plenty of room to grow. You can actually uh, slap in uh, more solid state hard drives. So it's kind of like your external one that you have here, but you just have the internal hard drives and you can put them in there. And I know people are freaking out right now because I got this metal screwdriver in my hand, clicking it around inside a uh, computer case. Don't worry, I'm not gonna touch the motherboard. He has one more, and that's, that's this is another thing that I have with mid tower. So here's the thing, this is fine. You can game off of this. You can play like, you know, all your games that are out there right now, especially if you go, uh, matter of fact, the Aurora R8, um, you're gonna have even bigger graphics cards in there. But the Aurora R7, you can go up to a 1080. He has a 1070. Uh, 1070 is ample for what he does. Once again, like I said, he's not a gamer. I game. And I still run with the 1070 and I'm happy with that. And that's just because when I got my 1070, it was like a $250 price difference between the 1070 and the 1080. And there was no point on uh, the performance boost wasn't going to be enough for me to spend that extra 250. I, I do think that uh, if you're going to buy the Aurora R7 and use it as a gaming rig, it's up to you whether you, or not you want to spend that extra 200. Matter of fact, I think it went down. I think it's maybe like a $150, $175 price point difference between the 1070 version of the Aurora R7 and the 1080. And then of course that doesn't include the uh, Elgato capture card that uh, Dale's already uh, purchased separately. So that's a $120 upgrade right there, the Elgato uh, internal game capture card. Uh, he loves it because um, now he can hook his Mac to it and he can work literally off of this uh, using his uh, Mac. And he has one more expansion bay in here that he can run with. And um, that's pretty much all you're gonna get out of this motherboard uh, per se is more spot for storage and another expansion slot. Uh, what he would use it for, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a sound card or something like that. And, I mean, the sound card, uh, the onboard sound cards are uh, extremely better than what they were in years previous when I used to do builds. We always put a sound card in. It was it was almost mandatory. Almost all your onboard sound was complete garbage. Nowadays, even with uh, this motherboard here, it, it's going to be decent enough for him if he wanted to game off of it. Like I said, the only gripes I have about it is um, I don't like the uh, power supply. Power supply could have been a little bit uh, uh, better, and uh, definitely the RAM. Uh, there's no heat sinks on that RAM. That RAM is just, like I said, straight vanilla out of the box. It reminds me of uh, RAM that I would use for doing uh, PC builds 10, maybe even 15 years ago. Um, matter of fact, I don't think I've touched a stick of RAM without heat sinks on it for probably, I would say, the about past eight years. Shame on uh, Alienware and Dell for uh, kind of cutting corners on that. But like I said, it does what he needs it to do. It's just fine. Uh, but if he were to, you know, want to overclock or do anything like that to it, I would definitely recommend against that because uh, he's going to run into heating issues. All right, I think that's it for uh, inside the case. Make sure you check out our previous video on the R7 where we did a quick rundown. Definitely check it out up there. Until then, see you around.